Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Pert. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Bowen. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe. From the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. First contact radio, we it's have arrived. First contact radio, it's time to demand the truth. It's time to demand the truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Today is the 6th of November. Full moon today, Scorpio sun, Taurus moon. Aspects that we're looking at today. We have an aspect here going on a little after 11 o'clock. This is between Pluto and Taurus. It's a nice good trine. Trine's a good positive energies amongst them. Pluto's that deep transformative energy. It's uh, associated with Scorpio. Taurus the Bull wants to deal with the physical world, pleasurable things. So our world kind of has a new perspective. Some things come up to help maybe make our world a little better. Things to consider. Uh, this afternoon, the wounded healer jumps in there with Taurus, and we start looking at that part of ourselves that maybe is not wounded as we thought it was, and can actually step forward and uh, be a force of healing in the universe. The sun and the moon, Scorpio and Taurus, are on that teeter totter this afternoon. It just so happens that Scorpio and Taurus are opposite each other on the zodiac, so here they're directly opposite. So could be a good balance with each other. Nice good balance between the watery element of Scorpio and the earthy element of Taurus. As you have one is challenges to go deeper and the other is challenging us to look at the physical world and comforts and what makes us happy in the physical world and and how exploring deeper might help that or not. And then later tonight at about 10.30 p.m. there is going to be another conjunction, or another opposition, excuse me, this time between the Moon and Venus. So, Taurus and Venus, which are two signs that are within working together. Venus is the symbol of the planet of Taurus. So, a nice good conjunction going on later this evening. The numerology for today is the number six. Here's how we've arrived at that number. One plus one plus six plus two plus zero plus one plus four add up to a fifteen. One plus five equals six. So here we go is the number six right here. Lovers. The fifteen before that is the devil right here. Scorpio is right here, and the Hierophant is right here. Taurus. For highlights of the tarot today, let's take a good look at. Let's take a good look at our uh, Taurus. We haven't looked at Taurus again. Our Moon sign. Taurus is related to the Emperor, or excuse me, the Hierophant. Kirin is the function assigned to the Hierophant. The Hebrew letter Va means nail. It is also the conjunction and the ornament hanging from the crown of the hierophant and the passing behind his ears is a conventional yoke. The yoke is something that joins together, again symbolizing union. The Hindu word for union is yoga. This card symbolizes interior hearing or the development of intuition by certain practices of yoga. This that we call the interior hearing is the real inner teaching. 
coming from your own inner self, your true teacher. That self is represented by the Hierophant. In this connection, we must caution that the true interior hearing is not the negative, the lower psychic types of clairaudience. The difference is really distinguished by the quality of what is heard. Intuition is above reason, but never contrary to it. it never urges you to do any unethical or selfish thing. The pillars representing the laws of polarity, or the interplay of the pair of opposites. Their capitals show a ball in a socket pattern and an acorn. Surrounded by oak leaves, this symbolizes the union of opposites. The design of the wards of the crossed keys is a bell to symbolize sound vibration used in hearing is also a hint that sound has a practical value in locking the gates of your inner temple. The two ministers who kneel before the hierophant represent desire or knowledge as indicated by the roses and lilies on their garments. Hebrew letter va hook hooking the spirit with the physical. It's an astrological sign of Taurus and it's an earth sign. The current moon phase is completely full 100% Mayan Oracle, we're at an eight-tone day. Eight-tone is called the Galactic Tone of Integrity. It's a human, so it's a human guided by the warrior, the wave spell of the serpent. The phrase is, I harmonize in order to influence modeling wisdom. I seal the process of free will with the Galactic Tone of Integrity. I'm guided by the power of intelligence, and today again is Galactic Activation Portal Day. One of these 10 days in a row. We're on day number 8. Space weather solar wind is currently at 455.2 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is a little quieter than yesterday. It's at a 2 to 3. Big corona hole on the bottom, but it's not facing our direction. M class flare F. 55 X class at 25. Geomagnetic storm activity 35% in the mid latitudes. 45 in the high latitudes. Looks like we are getting some activity ramping itself up out there in the cosmos. Up in the sky this week. Tonight, let's see here. All it tells us is that full moon. 8 p. Uh, 523 standard. Eastern Standard Time shines far below the two or three brightest stars of Aries during this evening. Can you see the Pleiades through the moonlight? The delicate little cluster is well to the moon's left. I can't see it here, but got the description. And in the Jewish calendar, day is 12 Cheshvan. Excuse me, 13 chest fun. Daily thought. Within, above, very simple. Be as the infinite light. Be within. Stay above. Very simple. Very short and sweet. There you go. UFO News is up next. Before we get to it. This is the UFO News. With Joshua Poet. All righty, Dirk. Thank you very much. First story takes us over to Mars. Here's another face on Mars. You can see a definite image. From the NASA database. Laying on its side, you can see a definite structure. I was looking through some Mars photos and stopped when I saw some arrows, trying to figure out what they were pointing to, and I noticed a sculptured face with a big blue arrow pointing at it. The face had probably been attached to a statue and it broke off during the big attack on Mars. Of course, NASA noticed it, but they didn't label the reason for the arrow. I added color to the face so it's easier for those not accustomed to seeing archaeological artifacts in their discarded position in their discovered position. NASA has a few other arrows in this photo, but this is the only anomaly that could be easily identified. Others would require HD version of the photo, which NASA of course would never offer to the public. Yeah. 
next. We go to Colorado, October 3rd. Hooper, Hooper, Colorado. This is the newest and best video I could find on this UFO. This is one of the many white orbs that's seen over the area of Colorado on Friday, October 3rd. This is the only one of these up close. Okay, they sat there for 15 minutes, then shot off faster than jets. This shaped white glowing unidentified flying object has been spotted by residents of Hooper multiple times in a southern Colorado city this past month. Okay, here's the video. Seven minutes, 20 seconds. Okay. Video links available. Next, green UFO seen across the eastern USA and Japan. Green UFOs in the sky. Multiple sightings of bright green objects were reported the same night from Georgia to Japan. But what were they? Multiple strange objects were spotted in the sky on Monday, reported by witnesses across the U.S. and even in Asia. On Monday night, more than 200 sightings of the bright greenest objects in the sky were reported across 13 U.S. states, and a similar object was spotted in Japan. The sightings were likely all different, but happened to travel across the sky around the same time. Okay. UFO Digest article for tr by Teresa J. Morris. Alien civilizations are real. Are UFOs real or a belief system? Alien civilizations exist on a belief system. Exist is a belief system. The story of aliens visiting this planet was here all along. We just didn't understand how to proceed through the filters of our mind and what we call the facts, the truth, and the logic and reasoning. Dan Brown's story of the mysteries behind the Da Vinci Code has opened our eyes to the possibilities as to how to read the mysteries of life and our ancient religions about the ancient religions. Just like Zechariah Sitchin and the Anunnaki, stories in the ancient translations of the Sumerian text and cuneiform we are now willing to open our eyes to see the ancient mystery schools. People chose to believe in aliens and UFOs. People today can now understand that there are many people who report sightings in alien ET contactees are now coming forth to report interaction with person in dreams, lucid dreams, and dreams that are epiphanies and are sharing divination and revelation. Many report that the veil has never been thinner between this world and the next. What is termed the shift into another dimension of time and space and space-time for travelers is upon us as this ascension age. What was once called the age of Aquarius is now called the new age of ascension for us all. The golden age of cosmology is now about aliens and UFOs in space. A lot more to the article. Let me leave this for you. And one more story here. UFO researcher, theologian, and scientist in the study of extraterrestrials. By Dennis Baltazar. As a UFO researcher for many years, on several occasions I've had to explain how I can do a UFO research and proclaim to be a Christian in the same breath. In a previous editorial, and when questioned in person, I explained that as a Christian, if you believe that God created everything, that's the end of the story. Also, if we know the universe is so large and we say it does not contain any other life forms, one would be limited God. So for me as a Christian, I personally have no problem thinking as I do. It now appears that certain religions and scientists are finally getting on the same page about the very likely possibility that life does in fact exist out there somewhere. For me, that helps confirm what I have believed for many years, and I'm glad to see some reality of that belief are finally coming to be revealed. The odds of life existing out there are just too overwhelming when one consider, considers that there are trillions of stars in the universe, and perhaps one in five have an Earth-like planet. However, unlike what many scientists have started, stated for years, to support life on those planets would have to be like our Earth. This is a statement I have long disagreed with. Nowhere in the rule book does it state that extraterrestrials would have to be like us humans on our Earth to support life. We don't know what life would be like on other planets, but we can be assured that life in some form does exist. 
Recently, NASA and the Library of Congress brought together scientists, theologians, philosophers, and historians from around the globe for a two-day conference to discuss how to prepare the world for extraterrestrial contact, whether microbes or intelligent beings. One of those theologians was Brother Guy Cosmologno, the new president of the Vatican Observatory Foundation. He stated in part, I believe alien life exists and would make my understanding of religion deeper in a richer way I can't predict yet. Several of our astronauts have made comments publicly about the possibility of life existing, and there are some of those that are included. Dr. Brian O'Leary, Gordon Cooper, and my personal favorite, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the Apollo 14 astronaut who stated, There have been crashed, crashed, and bodies recovered. We are not alone in the universe. They have been coming here for a long time. All right, a lot more to this article. I'm going to leave the link for you. Check it out. That is UFO News. I'll be right back. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. is the bringers of the dawn chapter 17 the language of light the 
The avatars and masters have now permeated the grid work of the world, bringing with them one of our own tools for te one of their own tools for teaching. The tools that are be being utilized on this planet are artifacts that are not known to your dimension, symbolic forms that literally have a life of their own. They make up what is known as the language of light. You are implanted with a structure, a geometric form, which triggers certain information within you. It also facilitates for those who work with you the sending of information directly into your being. The large majority of you are implanted, and if you are not now, shortly you will be, if you choose to open and align yourself. No one is implanted who does not choose it. The structure of the language of light is the way of receiving information and energy to facilitate your development. It is a method of learning without doing it through books or through the intellect. It involves opening to the belief that there is indeed a hierarchy, immense beyond your comprehension, that has been working with humanity since the very beginning. This hierarchy works with love, cherishes who you are, and has been able to see you through the time mechanisms that are keyed into this planet to know that consciousness is ready for the evolutionary leap. There are 144,000 members of the spiritual hierarchy who are infused in the grid work of the planet at this time. Each master has its own seal that represents one portion of the language of light, and you have 144,000 seals of energy that will eventually be infused within your being. To start with, you will work with the 12 forms that the body will be able to hold. Much later, once that transformation has occurred, there will be infusion of the entire 144,000. 44,000 symbolic language structures through your being. This will be the unfoldment that cannot be explained in this lifetime. This mutation is a process unfolding within you that will allow you to move into another realm of experience. Each person on this planet has the potential to move through this mutation. Many will stop the process because they do not have desire to align themselves with higher consciousness. When you are aware of who you are, that is one thing. When you become aware of the divine consciousness that sees the planet, an intellect that is vast, loving, and works with you, and when you call that consciousness and ask to be a portion of it, when you are implanted with the ge geometric forms, the forms that are implanted come to you in a variety of shapes, such as the pyramid structure. Why is the pyramid so important? On this planet and throughout the cosmos, the pyramid structure is utilized to represent a great unity of consciousness. It is a structure that is more difficult to create in all of the many facets, and yet is the structure of perfection. It is a structure that gathers energy from the earth and sends it outward. The structures of the spheres and the spiral will also be planted inside of you. The spiral is very dear to many of you because you have sojourned within cultures and societies where the spiral was utilized to communicate many ideas. There will also be implanted the structures of the parallel lines and the cube. And of course, there will be the structure of the Merkaba vehicle, which is the five-sided figure. The five-sided figure represents the figure of the human being in its most limited, unlimited state, totally free human. Some of you know it as a symbolic structure called the Merkaba vehicle. It is the human design without any limitations. It is the human being able to fly, which is something that a large majority of you do not think you can do. This implant comes when you truly commit yourself as to what was formerly not possible. Which implant or geometric form will be implanted inside of you will depend first on your request for alignment. It will also depend upon your belief of these entities choose to be available to you if you choose to be available for them. As you begin to unfold and allow what you call miracles or magnificent events to manifest in your life, they will begin. Many of you will start with the implant of the circle because it represents a God form, a unity, and completeness. Some of you will select a pyramid structure to be implanted since you will have had many lifetimes with discovered and still undiscovered pyramids all over the planet. You think your geography is known, but there are many things still undiscovered because they are slipping from one reality to another. Deep within jungles there are many buried pyramids often lying buried beneath mounds of earth. There are still many wonders to uncover. Those of you who are willing to believe that there are truly no limitations will be able to take the Merkava structure and move yourself off the planet with it while you are still living on the planet. The desire to do this must exist. 
if you are to be implanted with the Merkava. Already some of you have attempted to travel with it and you know it can be used in your being when you truly call the Merkava to yourself and you are willing to get the feeling of what it truly means to be unlimited consciousness that travels within your body without your body leaving the planet. That is when implanting will occur. The Merkava is not a highlight implanting, highest implanting as there is no highest or lowest implanting. Implanting comes when it will best suit the personal development. Once you have become implanted, there will be an unending process of new forms coming into your body. You do not consciously choose the form that you'll be implanted in you. However, you choose that life which you have, which opens to the structure of the language of light. You choose what is implanted to you each day that is your access to these forms. Through this marriage of energies, eventually we'll all hold the alphabet of light inside your body. The alphabet of light will teach you. If you have dreamt of geometric forms, it is an indication that the forms are working with you. Or perhaps you have been studying geometry in school. If you wish to know what you have been implanted with, to which forms continuously come first or larger than the others. There are many shapes you not even have names. There will be shapes that you know and recognize and later. There will be new forms and new shapes that your consciousness cannot translate. The spiral is one of the many basic forms of the language of light geometry. It is a bridge, a teaching unto itself. The form of it is coded with information and it is, and when you ride the spiral, it is seemingly non-ending. It shows you that the journey into yourself is non-ending and that the journey outside yourself is non-ending. You as a species will be able to split your consciousness and go in both directions so that consciousness can be connected by taking the non-ending journey within and the non-ending journey without. You link yourself up to a connected spiral in which there is a universal truth. We have said that your cells in your body within contain the entire history of the universe. Ideally, you will come to realize the existence of this golden ray library within yourself during your lifetime and learn how to read what is there. Taking the spiral within is one part of the journey. The trick is to go both within and go without and to realize that they are the same. The spiral exists in many dimensions. When you realize, visualize the spiral, you'll feel that you have known it, yet at first you are only knowing one aspect of it. When you begin to grow in spiral, you will realize it has many dimensions so that you could spend the rest of eternity to use your term exploring it. It grows. The spiral is the key to tapping into what is inside of you. Your DNA is in your form of a spiral. Spirals are all around you, and the language of light rides upon the light-coated filaments that descend in spiral form. This is something that is experimental and will grow for you. In your meditation, feel yourself riding a spiral like you would ride a tornado. Visualize yourself seeing a spiral approaching that is like a tornado, then instead of running from it, stand there and feel yourself whirled up inside of it. Write it, for it is a doorway to other realities. These language, this, these language of light geometrical shapes and forms are collections of experiences of individuals who have incarnated on this planet, deified the human laws, and awakened themselves to the higher abilities, and then manifested themselves as language and geometric components. Once these energies existed as men and women on this planet, they have evolved themselves into geometric symbols and exist in their sphere of activity just like you exist in your body. These entities exist in a language system or a geometric system. There are universes of these systems and there are visitations in your own universe from those universes at this time. There are circles and other shapes being put on this planet in the grain fields that are inexplicable as far as you concerned. These imprints are a frequency, not a process or an action. There is a story, there is a song or a story or a language that is being implanted on the surface of the earth with language symbols. These symbols come to establish a certain frequency and they are, that they are going to create. Eventually some of you will build houses they are geometric shapes and are not simply square or rectangles. Many of the dwellings in the Pleiades do not have shapes as you know them and it is understood that there are shapes and energy angles holding energy in astrology as it's understood that certain angles have power and certain things happen with certain angles. It is the same with shapes. The Great Pyramid is all as the Great Pyramid is all about the use of angles and shapes. 
energy collects in angles in shapes and in forms and you can learn to create these shapes and live in and around them energies are formed and transmitted in this way you will discover that certain degrees have certain powers and that some angles are very uncomfortable for you to be in it is sometimes better to sleep in the middle of a room rather than having your bed jammed in a 90 degree angle because the 90 degree angle creates an energy lock in the middle of the room energy flows around you the third dimensional reality many portals are now being opened to bring evolution upon earth at one time the planet was sealed off and put in a quarantine because there were forces that fought here there's been incredible wars upon this planet and some of the vestiges of these wars still exist at the very barren areas upon this planet this was a time of chaos and confusion when creator gods fought creator gods during the most recent wave of the wars around 10 or 12,000 years ago earth was sealed off because those beings who operated with light lost the battle light does not always win you know light is not always the victor as you think of a victor for light must learn to integrate with all portions of itself prime creators within all things and dark and light are part of the creator therefore light must incorporate with the dark portion of itself time is orchestrated and brought events together a number of cycles were set to pass since the last wars after which the energy portals onto this planet would again be opened so that light could enter this is the time period light is being orchestrated to once again come into the planet and is increasing daily in order for energy to work its way through our consciousness it must house itself in the planet intelligence penetrates in the form of waves making geometric shapes on earth it is not that a spaceship comes down making crop circles in the night and then takes off although some circles have been caused by ship landings intelligence can take the guise of many form at once and often intelligence comes to the earth in the form of a wave a time will come when there will actually be a wave of light that sweeps the earth intelligence is being spoken beyond the spoken word and beyond the wit written word for it is a frequency that sometimes comes in geometric shapes Pythagoras had a beginning grasp of this but his geometry was not understood by others geometry is an involved intelligence a collection of experience that can be communicate huge amounts of information actually crop circles all over the planet are put there by sounds above human frequency to implement these language shapes many times in the beginning these shapes called are circles they will evolve with the triangles lines and many other things the crop circles have not been the most prevalent in england and throughout europe however there are also in the previously known in the soviet and south america they are even in the united states although some people are doing a good job of pretending they are not there we understand that many of the news broadcasters are planning upcoming events shows about these crop circles we will see how much they pretend that they don't know about them it's going to be interesting these geometric shapes are like hieroglyphs the hieroglyphs and pictographs carved in the stone on this planet are similar generation of intelligence in other world words if they were to read the hieroglyphs based on the rosetta stone the hieroglyphs would communicate one thing if they were to remember the secret language of the priest the hieroglyphs would tell another story and if they were able to understand the language of the creator gods they would say something entirely different the circles and shapes being put here on earth are said to assist you in holding and managing your frequency and having the courage to live your light they make frequency information available in a very subtle way and no one can figure them out yet these shapes are all connected to one another and if they were all written out simultaneously on some farmers field something would happen to them immediately they are spaced from one continent to the other they move a frequency around the planet that will help activate earth's grid work it will allow you not to feed off so weird when you know and you feel more comfortable with the changes in frequency as they occur this is just a little bit of what crop circles do they are quite interesting many of them are designed and constructed by some of what you by what some call ascended masters there's also a joke behind them you must understand that some beings as they become very evolved develop a tremendous sense of humor they see the humor in all things as we have said geometric shapes and forms are carriers of intelligence they are frequency waves that can be modulated and changed the shapes coming to the earth are like energy gates or energy cliffs they hold intelligence and are being set up in event to eventually connect and make an intelligent grid work around the planet 
this grid work will have the frequency that humanity can use to evolve. The whole language is not on the planet at this time. The glyphs come to the earth a result of a certain evolution of consciousness. They work with the places that are vortex centers that are now drawing them in over the billions of years that earth has been in orbit. These centers have been covered over and buried. Some of them have gone into dormancy and many of them are being reawakened because the seal around the planet has been penetrated. The crop circles are phenomenal expressions of consciousness. They come into your reality to show you that the reasoning mind can control all of the data much like it would would like to. These events occur to intersect with the coding of consciousness of all human beings. Whenever reality cannot be explained, a certain niche is opened within the consciousness. The crop circles are completely beyond the logical mind, therefore they force the consensus view of reality to expand, since reality as formally design cannot house these events as a possibility. They are a trigger. They force reality to move beyond its own limitations. There are a number of reasons for the existence of crop circles. Basically, they exist to force reality to move to get a feeling rather than thinking. Most who explore these circles feel their way through the circles rather than feel their way through them. They think their way rather than feel their way. Great Britain is having a rash of them because in general the British have a very logically oriented consciousness. However, land of the British Isles is imprinted with megalithic spirals and stone forms that have intensely imprinted the intuitive facilities of the inhabitants. The phenomena has no logic. To it, it is forcing a logical oriented society to recognize something that makes no sense and is being done in a very playful and obvious way without creating a threat to anyone's view of reality. If ships were to land everywhere, people would get upset. When corn lies down in concentric circles and doesn't even break or die, no one really gets too upset. Do you understand how energies play with you? It is necessary to do certain things so that you can get it and figure it out without having your circuits overloaded. This language is being introduced to this planet as a story, a glyph of information that holds a frequency to assist you in holding your own frequency. As you awaken, it is easy for others to read and recognize you. You are monitored all the time because there are devices that monitor the evolution and, and location of consciousness. When consciousness had reached a certain place, assistance is brought from the outside to establish other realms of that frequency. In other words, to say... Say you open a restaurant and it is a big hit. You run and maintain it and still and sell really good food. Then someone comes along and says, how about franchising? Let's get you everywhere. These geometric shapes help you franchise the frequency by spreading it all over the planet and holding it. They bring you to a new level of attainment. All right, very good. Good chapter on the language of light. And that brings us to an article here in 5D. Asked a question which has been asked in the past. Is the moon a hollow spacecraft? Several science fiction books of the early 20th century, including H.G. Wells' The First Men of the Moon, take place within a hollow moon inhabited by aliens. In 1972, Soviet scientists took this seemingly whimsical premise a step further proposing that the moon is actually a shell-like alien spacecraft built by extraterrestrials with superior technology and intelligence. According to astronomers, the moon, though admittedly enigmatic as far as celestial bodies go, couldn't maintain its mass and gravitational field if it lacked a dense core. The spaceship moon theory, also known as the Vaisin sherber bakov theory, is a theory that claims that the Earth's moon may actually be an alien spacecraft. The theory was put forth by two members of the then Soviet Academy of Sciences, Michael Vasin and Alexander Shashara Bakov, in a July 1970 article entitled, Is the Moon the Creation of Alien Intelligence? Baskin and Sherpak Bovkov's thesis was that the moon is a hollowed-out planetoid created by unknown beings with technology far superior to any Earth. Huge machines would have been used to melt rock and form large cavities within the moon, and the resulting molten lava spewed out onto the planet's surface. The moon would therefore consist of a hull-like inner shell and an outer shell made from metallic rocky slag. For reasons unknown, the spaceship moon was then placed into orbit around the Earth. Their theory relies heavily on the suggestion that large lunar craters generally assumed to be from the meteor impact 
are generally too shallow to have flat or even convex bottoms. Small craters have a depth proportional to their diameter, but large craters are not deeper. It is theorized that small meteorites are making a cup-shaped depression in the rocky surface of the moon, while the large meteors are drilling through a five-mile thick rocky layer and hitting a high tensile hull underneath. Additionally, the authors note that the surface material of the moon is substantially composed of different elements, chromium, titanium, and zirconium, from the surface of the Earth. And they also note that some of the moon rocks and others are older than the oldest rocks on Earth. They postulate the moon comprises a rocky outer layer a few miles thick, covering a strong hull, perhaps 20 miles thick, and beneath that there is a void possibly containing an atmosphere. In 1975, Don Wilson published Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon, in which he compiled what he considered supporting facts for this theory. In 1976, George H. Leonard published Somebody Else is on the Moon, in which he reprinted numerous NASA photographs of the lunar surface and suggested that the large-scale machinery was visible in these pictures. Readers have generally not been able to see these artifacts. SUNY Karanta Titelake of Cornell University suggests that there are at least two ways to determine the distribution of mass within a body. One involves the moment of inertia parameters, the other involves seismic observations. In the case of the former, Karanta Titelake points out that one such parameter, the normalized polar movement of inertia, which is very close to that of a solid object with radially consistent density. As for the latter, he notes that the moon is only a planetary body beside the Earth on which the extensive seismic observations have been made. These observations have constrained the thickness of the moon's crust, mantle, and core, suggesting that it could not be hollow. Karen Masters of the University of Portsmouth similarly suggests that based on the behavior of objects interacting with the gravitational field of the moon, we can determine the mass of the moon given the sizable observable size of the moon we can establish the density but strongly reject the notion that the moon could be hollow. And here we have uh, some interesting videos on the subject. This particular one is David Icke talking about the moon. The moon at one point was hit by someone shot something up there hit the moon and it rang like a bell. So theories of the moon being hollow have interesting uh, situations that have occurred with them why people might think that all right moving along this is our channeled message for today comes to us from the Pleiadians the Pleiadians the point in the spiral of fundamental change entering the golden stage November 2nd 2014 by Maline Portia Lafont the Pleiadians, blessings and greetings to you all, our dearest ones. We have been working on the process of integration for all of you and more specifically, concerning the integrations of your higher galactic awareness, and consciousness that is birthed within you all. It is a time of examining the galactic consciousness within oneself, as you start the engines of that confined galactic consciousness within you. Understand our dearest ones, that all is within you, and that it is you that will awaken your own divine potential and abilities. We cannot stress this enough as it is clearly not yet fully understood by all of you. Nevertheless, you are coming to that great knowing, and some are starting to excel gradually in this. That's the reason why you need to gain the awareness of your own personal contribution during the path of ascension. It is of the utmost importance that you gain your own personal consciousness, as a high crisp light into this body in order to bring this forth into your personal life. And then you bring forth the change you so desire, you, yourself, and no one else. These are indeed great times of change for all of humanity surpassing even the previous changes and shifts humanity has come to experience. It is as it were a great cycle of profound release of the old for the collective and the global planes. There comes a point in time where all of humanity reaches this threshold that stands as a guarantee for the total global rejuvenation. One that stands first and foremost for the entire global shift that awakens humanity to their full potential. That time has now come and is currently unfolding. It is a center of a source that you have come to reach, and this source is in alignment with the great source of all that is. 
you have reached that point in the spiral of evolution and infinity. This center is a consciousness and vibration that shifts all first within the self and then without. It now enters your planes of existence to bring along the greater understanding of your own needs and desires for change and for your creations. Change comes forth from growth and insights that are being gained during your evolution as to where you arise from the planes of the old, and enter into the new that is about to be created by yourselves. It is a point in time, where all the timelines are merging into one, at a pace that is acceptable for all, and in the best interest for this planetary evolution. You come to see and feel that at times these timelines are already merging at cross points and as this spiral of timelines is getting smaller and thinner, the timelines become one timeline of infinity. It is a gesture and blessing from your own higher levels and from the expressions of your God and Christ selves that have come to be experienced in this lifetime. This is a very important and crucial time frame for all of humanity, whether to fall in the makeup of your own fears, or to rise above the familiar of this earthly material density, and stretch the legs of the newborn you. Are you going to allow the new birth for you to step out, or will you keep it within? Every part of your being is now being tested and cleansed in profound ways to make the choice of whether to stay in your old form, or whether to rise above the mundane. The choice is up to you in which form you will come to be, and the vibrations shall come along as who you are and choose to vibrate at this time. What you put your focus on, is now crucially important. You bring the new earth through you as you birth it through yourself. Come to see it within you and you shall realize it is already here in the now, for you are here in the now, and from within, it shall rise to the surface of your being, emanating that world in your outer reality. You help the world to change and it is your responsibility as a free will of all. What you carry, you are, and you will emanate this at all times. This point in the spiral is one of fundamental change, a chamber of accelerations and shifts that provide all the information and the codes to change this world and your human perceptions into a golden stage. This golden stage is one of crisp vibrations and it invites you to think, to act, and to be according to its vibrational frequency. You can only play along and enjoy the joy on this golden stage if you fit in its vibration, like a perfect match. Therefore be, and bring in your own crisp consciousness within your heart for you all have a crisp consciousness level and expression that awaits to be fully integrated and embodied again. Crucial times, crucial decisions, crucial choices await you all that will demand instant conscious answers and measurements of crisp consciousness. How to do that you ask? There is no how. Dearest ones, there is only the knowing and the inner feeling that will lead you along this adventure, and allow you to be able and stay balanced through this, all when pressure is heating up. We wish for you to be still, to keep yourself centered and balanced through every event on earth as well as within, distractions are very palpable lately on your plane of existence. Learn to keep releasing the old patterns in order to learn and fly with the winds of change. There are too many influxes entering on your planes. For you to hold on to just one. Taste the newly arrived cosmic and galactic energies of our planes, and allow yourselves to enjoy this interchange and bodily shift. You are the master beings on this earth and you have come to make this all truly unfold within your own realities. We are with you in loving support. Allow us to be with you and we will do so with peace and harmony. The Pleiadians All right, good message. Noticed how it uh, talked about spirals just like what we were talking about in the reading so let me stop that there there we go all right that brings us to our meditation for today close your eyes take a deep breath and exhale take another deep breath and exhale again Another deep breath and exhale. Imagine yourself walking the path of life and as you do you feel the energy of the planet. You feel the light of the sun shining on you and the wind gently blowing across your skin. You feel alive walking around in life. And you imagine from the sun 
these waves of light hitting and entering your body as they do every day. And you imagine within these waves of light, geometric forms, spirals, squares, triangles, circles, and other types of shapes that all activate act portions of your consciousness. And so you just imagine as you go through the world that you are being programmed in the way that is destined for you to be programmed as you evolve according to the way you are designed to evolve. Imagine the words of today's affirmation, I feel thin, alive, and healthy. Feel alive and healthy. Imagine yourself just walking through life, sending out love into the world today. This weekend. And onward. And let that be enough. So just imagine yourself walking through life, sending out love and light to all those you meet, doing so just silently and allowing that love to go out and be an inspiration and that light to go out and bring the information needed to change the world to the positive place that we know it can be. So let your subconscious mind continue on the journey of sending out light and love and bring your conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one coming back to the present moment. Happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale and open your eyes. That's it, my friends. That's the show for today. Thank you very much. I will not be here tomorrow, nor will I be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of next week, but I will rejoin the process a week from tomorrow. So take care. Have a good week. I love you. Keep loving each other, and uh, let's just see how everything unfolds. It's all going to be good. You'll see. Talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.